Thank you. All right, let's go to Pete. This is Pete. Hey, Pete, you're on the show. Good evening. How are you doing tonight, I'm Peter? good, man. Thank you. It's good. I want to say thank you, Aaron, for uh, what you're doing. Thank you, uh, Pete. More people. I mean, I've been very aware of what is going on with our government, <clears throat> uh, looking at the newamericancentury.org website and what these men are doing who say that there are uh, our leaders <laughs> and what they're doing. And I just appreciate after I'm done talking with you, I'm going to sign up and uh, just keep on. we got to do, like you said, we need to do what Gandhi preached and what King preached about having nonviolent uh, revolution so that the government is aware that we're tired of this, what we, they're trying to sell us and what the corporations are trying to sell us. Exactly. And I just appreciate uh, you making this movie and getting uh, people to get started so that they're aware and being okay. a focal point to get right. this movement going. Thank God, you. God bless you. We have, a, we have a slogan for the movie now. One family, one movement, freedom for all. That's what we're about. We, wait, we have about three or four minutes left. Recap this again, and what, what do you, and how you came to this point to make this film, and how do you see all this? Well, my my, my thing is that I, uh, I I wasn't happy with what was happening in the country. I kept seeing little things happening, little problems. When Ross Perot ran for ran for uh, president, you know, I was very dissatisfied. When he ran, I said, Oh my God, there are millions of people who feel like mm -hmm. I feel. Because yeah. I thought I was alone in my feelings. You know, I saw things happening, and I wasn't happy with it. And then when he ran, I, uh, and I saw many millions of people were unhappy. Then I decided to get more active in politics because there was a base to work with. And uh, I, I went out and made a video uh, called Mad as Hell, uh, which was a bit over the top, yeah. I must say. And uh, but yet the content was very good. The style in which mm -hmm. I did it was a little strange, I must admit. But um, and then I ran for governor of Nevada in '98, yeah. and I came in second in a four-way race uh, with almost 30 percent of the vote. They said I wouldn't get two percent, and uh, and that's when I found out about the voting machines and what's going on with the voting machines and the Sequoia Pacific machine and the Diebold machine. You know those machines. Um, uh, who, who, the source code of those machines determines who wins the election. Whoever programs the source code decides who wins the election. And the, uh, the people who are in charge of the voting machines, uh, the people, not the people who build it, but the elected officials, mm -hmm. they have no say in what the source code says. They can't even check the source code. So, if, so let's assume for an example that uh, it's programmed that every three votes I get, I only get two, and you get three. So they, they convert the win. And there's no way to know how you voted. There's no way to double check it. This is no paper ballots. So you must have paper ballots. So when I ran for governor and I saw the corruption of the voting machines, and then I saw what happened at Ruby Ridge when they killed all the, when they killed a child, shot him in the back, and blew the mother's head off, and, and Waco when they killed all those people for no reason. I just said, well, how can this be happening in America? How can this be happening here? And I got more and more involved and more and more interested to see what was going on. Was there a tipping point? I think Waco was my tipping point. When I saw what happened to Waco, I said, I'm going full-fledged. This is disgusting. They killed all those people for no reason. There was no need for those people That's to right. die and to be killed in that fight and burned to death. That was the most disgusting event. The war in Iraq, a disgusting event. When I heard Rumsfeld talking about shock and awe, oh, let's everybody go home, watch on television shock and awe, as if it was a Fourth of July fireworks. Mm -hmm. There are people under that concrete being killed and maimed, children and women and men dying for no reason. For no reason, you know. I had a friend, one of the Rockefellers. He said to me, "Aaron, uh, what do you think women's liberation was about?" And I said, uh, "I think I had conventional thinking." And I said, "I think it was about women having equal right to work with men, equal pay." Mm -hmm. You know. He said, "You know what, Aaron? You're an idiot." And he started to laugh at me. So what do you mean? He says, "You want to know what that was about?" So tell me. He said, "We, the Rockefeller Foundation, financed that women's lib movement. You want to know why? For two reasons." Half the population wasn't taxable before. And the second reason is, now the kids go to our schools at an early age, and we mow them. There's no more family at home to take care of the kids. The state becomes the family now, Aaron. You get it? And that's how this country is working. It's run by evil. It's run by evil forces. And people in this country better wake up to the truth and save this country from what's happening. How fast that hour went. Um... Aaron's documentary, America, Freedom to Fascism.
All right, everybody, what a show. And inside, I may, maybe we can get him on the radio show tomorrow, see what he does. All right? Thank you very I'll much. I'll see everybody tomorrow. Thanks.